Um, we just got in uh, Andrew Kippen from uh, Boxy Software, and uh, unfortunately he was detained yesterday, so we, we got him on here today. I just had like uh, maybe 10 minutes notice. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for uh, coming. Yeah, my pleasure, guys. Sorry I missed you last night, but I'm excited that, uh, that we could get together tonight and chat about what's going on. And of course, Brad from the uh, Tech Webcast, which had uh, you also on his show earlier. So um, that's why we kind of have him here, because he might, since he had you on your show, or vice versa, um, be able to answer some more questions. And uh, actually, you know, I wrote out a, you know, a list uh, the other day. And uh, of course, uh, Boxy, which is uh, based on XBMC's uh, source codes. Um, and uh, Boxy software is available on the Mac, Linux, Windows, and Xbox, I believe, right? Uh, no, Xbox is the original Apple TV. Um, yeah, app, uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, and then the Boxy box itself. Okay, okay. And uh, wow, we're getting some people in the chat room right there. Um, now, um, how do you... How how do you what what makes your software different from like other media centers? Um, um, because I know there's a few out there, uh, you know, for available. Sure. I I think you know when when people are going out to look for this kind of um, hardware or software, they're they're um, kind of looking at maybe uh, Roku, Apple TV, um, maybe if you're uh, kind of a real Bluetooth Geek, you're looking at Sage TV or maybe Windows Media Center. Um, and I think the, the difference between Boxy and all of those is really kind of this dual focus on um, elegant simplicity. So being able to do a ton of stuff, but making it very simple to use. Um, and then uh, additionally, openness. So we're based on XBMC, which is an open source project. Um, we really, we think of ourselves more so as a platform, uh, for content. So make it easy for big companies like Netflix and Pandora and Voodoo and, um, you know, people like Funny or Die to create apps, but we also make it easy for individuals and, you know, smaller content companies to make their own apps and put them out on the platform. Um, and even if they... Uh, let's say they, they put out stuff, they don't even have to put it into our um, kind of catalog of content. Uh, it, they can create their own catalog, they can add in as many apps into that catalog as they want, and they just publish an, a, a, a URL that they can give to their viewers or their fans, and then they can put that URL into Boxy to get access. So it's really, you know, making something that's really easy to use and also open to all the flexibility, the creativity, that's available on the internet. Um, and more specifically, you know, if, if we're talking about Apple TV, um, that device is really great if you're only on iTunes or wanting to use Netflix. Um, it doesn't support a lot of playback file formats. Um, it certainly doesn't have any apps. So you're, you're kind of limited uh, in that regard. And then if you're looking at Roku, um, you know, they've done a great job of building out a box that's really focused on streaming um, they've got a lot of key apps on there, but I think if you're looking for something that is less hunt and peck, um, so if, you know, if you don't know what you want to watch, um, there's not a real great way on either of those devices to kind of find something new. Um, and also, you know, we have social f functionality built in, so I can see what my friends are sharing on Facebook, what they're sharing on Twitter, all that comes into a really nice feed for me that I can quickly sort through and kind of channel surf through recommendations that are, that are tailored to me. Um, and then on the, the local side, so if, if any of your listeners have big media collections at home, I know I've got um, a hard drive with a bunch of DVDs that I've copied over, um, then Boxy makes it really easy to um, index all that, build a beautiful library that basically anybody can just grab the remote from you and navigate through all your, your movies or your TV shows um, and play pretty much any file format. So MKV, AVI, MPEG, all those different formats that, uh, that people have in their collections. We do our best to play every single one of them. Good stuff. You know, um, oh, go ahead. 
Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, Steve. Uh, Andrew, what about um, the iPad app and also for the people in Australia, is there any new content coming content coming to Australia or any, any new apps or um, like the BBC iPlay, is that coming any soon, soon, or soon to Australia or? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head about uh, specific Australian content. I know we're trying to add stuff all the time, and yep. and I think actually we we've just added stuff to the uh, to the TV show and movie library. So cool. if um, if you download the app or if you've got the boxy box, you can go into the TV show library and sort by most recent and see some of the updated content. Um, and uh, talking about the iPad, so our goal is really for for Boxy's software to be embedded into a bunch of different devices, no matter where you are. So we've got software for your computer. We've got uh, the Boxy box that you can run on your TV. And we're also working on a new iPad app, which we've uh, we demoed at our um, our event in London two weeks ago. Cool. Um, and the, the goal there is to create an app that's useful on its own, but also useful with, uh, with the Boxy box. So, um, You'll be able to get that social feed from your friends on Facebook and Twitter. You'll be able to see your queue, um, what we call watch later. So as you're going throughout your day, let's say people are sharing videos with you and you're like, okay, I can't stop and watch a 20 minute Ted talk right now. Um, or I can't, you know, I don't have five minutes to look at this YouTube video. You can just queue it up and save it for later and then send it to your TV. Well, that'll also work on your, um, on your iPad as well. And then one of the really cool features is we're actually going to release a, uh, a little piece of software that you can run on your computer, uh, a little boxy media server that will allow you to take any of those video files that you have stored on your PC and send them to your iPad. And we'll handle, you know, if, if, uh, if your iPad users out there, you know that some stuff plays and some stuff doesn't. And a lot of times you've got to convert files and transfer them over to the iPad with this you don't have to trans you don't have to transfer you don't have to encode anything we do that all on the fly uh, so it's a much easier kind of more streamlined way to get um, all the stuff that you have on your computer onto your iPad good stuff and when when will this app be out oh that is the big question um, question we we are uh, we're still finalizing some of the stuff on the app with a hope of submitting to uh, to Apple early next month and then we're really kind of in their hands All right. um, as far as when it comes out. But we're, we're hoping sometime next month. Nice. All right. Looking forward to it. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to add um, earlier um, when I asked you about um, how, how your software is different for everybody else, um, I also wanted to add that it's cross-platform, which is really important because some um, media centers are only what one operating system, you know, like a Windows Media Center, Windows only, Plex, uh, Mac only, where yours is all, you know, across most of the, the platforms. And of course, simplicity is uh, another thing. So. Yeah, and I think that was one of the things as we started out, we didn't want to leave anybody out. We wanted to make sure, certainly that, uh, <laughs> honestly, that all of us were taken care of. Uh, and all of us were either on Linux or on Mac. And so we, we built out the platform first for Mac, then for Linux, and then for Windows which is kind of uh, counterintuitive uh, if you look at the amount of users that are out there. But we really built this thing for ourselves first and foremost. Um, so we started off with, uh, with Mac and Linux and then built out Windows. And I think now that, now that we've been out there for a while, we see uh, the majority of people using Boxy is on, is on Windows, then Mac. Um, but Boxy Box is also climbing. And then we still have um, a small minority in, in Linux who are just you know, very vocal. They love it. They, you know, want to see us improve it. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we announced three weeks ago that we'll be updating the PC software to kind of keep up to date with the, uh, with the boxy box, uh, sometime later this fall. Actually, when I, when I was, you know, looking about, um, information about boxy box, um, and, uh, I actually looked at the numbers and I think boxy, software was listed among the top three um media centers out there um i think you know windows media center and uh i forgot the other one what it was so uh that, that's you know um pretty good uh yeah we've been we've been really happy i think you know something that's telling is 
when we first launched back in June of 2008, we really expected, you know, we were like, oh, it'd be great if we could get 5,000 alpha testers by the end of the year. And this was June. Um, so we were like, you know, six months, get a few thousand testers on. Um, we're really excited about getting the product out there. And within two weeks, we had 10,000 people. By the end of the year, we had 100,000 people. Wow. So huh. we knew we were definitely on to something. And, um, and I think catering to the audiences that we did with the Mac and Linux actually really benefited us because a lot of the guys who develop apps are on Linux. And a lot of the press and a lot of the people who are kind of tastemakers um, end up being on Macs. And so it was a really great way for us to kind of get out there, get more apps, get some word of mouth going. Um, and it, uh, it's really served us well. We, the open source community has been really great to us. And, uh, and they can, we continue to contribute code back and forth with XBMC. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Good stuff. And what was it like over in London? Uh, London was insane. Uh, it was so good. So, you know, we're we're a U.S.-based company, although we're funded by five Israelis. So we have an office in Tel Aviv, and we have an, our headquarters in New York. Um, and we've done a number of events in in New York and in San Francisco, but this was going to be our first international event. Um, so we weren't quite sure what to expect. Um, and little did we know when we got over there, we ended up um, selling out the venue. And then some. So the, the venue was supposed to hold 400 people, and we ended up uh, selling about 430 tickets. So uh, it ended up being great. We had a full house. Um, the uh, the people were super passionate. I think any time that you're a user of, um, of software and, and somebody comes out and kind of does an event, invites you out, and kind of shows you that they're there, they want to interact with you, um, it was a really good way to, to reach out to users there and, and just let them know that we're working on new content for the UK, for Europe, and uh, and really expanding the platform over there. Good stuff. Um, any plans of uh, coming to Australia? You know, what's funny is that, uh, <laughs> so we just hired a new Australian guy yep. who works here in the New York office. Cool. And um, I'm sure he'll be back and forth between Australia and, uh, and New York. Um, we don't have any plans. We have plans for more European events, uh, okay. probably in, in Germany and Sweden. Nothing in Australia yet, but I know that he's talked to um, he's talked to the guys at D-Link in Australia, and um, you know if there's a possibility to do something like that, um, you know we'll certainly jump on it. Cool, good stuff. Um, me me being a you know a Linux guy for a very long time um you know I often dive really deep in sometimes into the uh the software um what mm -hmm. kind is there any particular thing that you use to decode the different um video media I mean do you use like um integrate like VLC or another type of player or codexes that you use to uh do that We use FFmpeg Ah Okay, you know, I was thinking about that too. Okay, is that the primary yep. codec you use? Yep. Oh wow. Okay. And uh, uh, now get into a little bit of the social networking. Now, uh, I kind of noticed this myself with uh, integrating Facebook and Twitter that you kind of only did uh, did it uh, along the video side of things. And at first, I was kind of wondering maybe if you would do like. Um, just to post themselves, but then I guess I realized that it was more geared toward multimedia. So, um, what what are your thoughts on that? Or I think when we look at at those kinds of um, at those kinds of social networks, um, there's definitely there's there's a place for you know giving you access to your Twitter stream, giving you access to your Facebook feed within a Facebook app or within a, tw a Twitter app. Um, I think what we're trying to really do is just focus in on the video. Um, honestly, I think it actually becomes too noisy if you give people access to absolutely everything. Um, and by focusing in on the video, what we've been able to do is really personalize the experience and give you something new every time you sit down in front of it. Um, because chances are when you sit down in front of your TV, 
you know, you don't want the same experience that you expect on your laptop or your mobile phone. You want, you really want video. Um, you want something that's immersive and reading text from across the screen, from across the room, um, just isn't kind of that first, um, that first thing that you're looking for when you sit down. And so I think that's why we focused in on, on video and helping yeah. people discover new content and kind of create uh, connect with their friends through it. Um, how about the the new updates? I think now I don't know if it was 1.1 update, um, which was actually uh, there was one that was fairly recent. But um, I think I read up on some of the updates on the blog, um, the Boxy blog, and I think you got like support for HTML5 now, um, HFS plus format, I guess for like Mac external hard drives. Can you go a little bit over that? Yeah, um, and actually we should say, I'm actually going to pull it up right now just to make sure I cover all my bases. Oh, okay. um, you, can find, you can find our blog at uh, blog.boxy.tv. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the, the main impetus of this last, uh, this last update, which was 1.1, um, was getting, getting a couple key elements in the browser. So adding in some favorites, adding in history. Um, a lot of people were kind of, um, finding it difficult to put in the same, you know, if, if you're always going to, let's say, a certain news site or a certain, uh, any sort of website on a regular basis, it was a pain having to put in the URL every time. So we added um, favorites and history. We also ended up making the, the browser a lot faster, um, just doing a lot of backend optimization, helping, making sure that, uh, that things were rendering qu more quickly and, and better. Um, we added a new on-screen display, which um, it's kind of silly to get so excited about this, but the seek huh. bar now is just way better. There's no kind of um, typical fast-forward, rewind, super fast-forward, super rewind, and play pause. What we've done is just giving you play pause and then along the bottom where you have the, um, gosh, I don't even know what to call it. I guess the the timeline yeah. of what's playing. Um, we've just given you a little slider, and you can move that slider along to wherever you want to watch in the video. So if you want to jump two hours forward, you can do it really, really easily. Um, and we kind of slimmed down some of the uh, some of the other stuff that was on the on-screen display just to make it uh, more about the video that's that's playing than anything else. Um, so apart from that, we added a new movie trailer section. So if you go to movies and then uh, underneath where you have all and genres and channels, you also have a trailer section. So you can see now on Boxy, you can see what's, you know, get, get a taste of what's playing in the theater. You can get DVDs uh, as soon as they're out on, um, on Vudu here in the U.S. And, and some of the other services that we support. Um, and then you can get older titles from, uh, from Vudu, from Netflix, from um, a lot of the indie movie services that we support as well. Um, and then for people who, uh, two other big, big portions of the update. So one is being able to customize the information that appears for your local files. So let's say you shoot a home movie and you want to add your own metadata. You can now do that with uh, support for NFO files. So you can, you know, shoot a home movie and add like a funny graphic to it, um, add in your own text and descriptions. And previously, Boxy wasn't able to to um, to play that kind of stuff or, or index it properly. So we're really excited about that. And then also, um, we added 17 more languages. So for a lot of the European countries, for Arabic um, and uh, Scandinavian. Um, Turkish, let's see, I'm just, I'm looking over the list right now. Um, yeah, it's mainly European plus Arabic and Turkish. Um, it's been, you know, all in English up until now. Huh. So we're excited to add that in. Um, now I, I know that the, this, the, the major updates were mainly on the boxy box. Now I know you have a major update with the, the PC Mac and the, you know, the software version for the computers. Um, are we going to see the same changes um, uh, like we do on the boxy box? Are, are they going to be the same once the the release this fall? Yeah, our goal is to to kind of do a a milestone release where everything comes up to speed, and they're all at the uh, 
at the same place. Um, I think you'll probably continue to see the PC software and the Mac and the Linux software lag a little bit behind the boxy box, just because you know at the end of the day, we only have so many developers and so many resources that we can focus on. And currently, we're supporting eight different platforms. Um, so when you look at that, that's we have like two, um, let's say two developers per platform that we can use, uh, and there are just you know there are things that we want to do and, and places we want to take the the um, the software that require all of our resources to really focus in and and hone in on something. So we'll we'll continue to kind of um, lead with the boxy box and then have the the PC software update. Um, hopefully, you know, no more than a few months behind it. Um. Yeah, I know you're kind of on a schedule. You have to go soon. So um, if we have any more like questions in the chat room, uh, since we have Andrew Kippen here right now and or maybe Brad, which is uh, online with us right now. Uh, yeah, just last question. Uh, what actually happened to the uh, YouTube app? How did it break? With the um, uh, screen. When are you talking about? Uh, this was the other day, a while back, probably about a week ago. The, when you went go to uh, launch the YouTube app, you get a black screen. But that's been fixed now. Yeah, you know, sometimes these guys go out and they change something. Uh, you think about all the different devices that YouTube works with. Yep. Um, sometimes they go in and they change something about how the player interacts, um, and it breaks our app, and we just have to give them a call and kind of work through the issues with them. Um, so that's all that was. All right, cool, man. Good stuff. And also the um, that music app has gone off the Australian um, app app place. Which Vivo? which app? Vivo. Yeah, you know what? I checked into that after you said something. Um, it's it's really only, as far as I know, and as far as they've told me, it's only available in the US and um, and UK. So I don't know why it was showing up in Australia to begin with. That was a bit weird, um, Steve. But you know, you you definitely have access. Um, so I, I I'm curious actually to know if there are other people who had used the um, who were getting the Vivo app in Australia. Well, actually, Carl Brand left a a thing that that might be kind of true because I know you take uh, YouTube changes their API a lot and and that could do a lot with it because I, I know you, I use Justin TV and and JTV is constantly updating their API with YouTube because it breaks all the time. So I'm kind of wondering if also that might be the reason why. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, is there any more questions or any questions in the uh, chat room before uh, I make sure? So I'm be doing a DVR function. Okay, uh, RMX is asking about a DVR function. So there's no DVR function at the moment. Um, we kind of think, I mean, if you think about where all of the media is coming from, um, everything is available on demand whenever you want it anyway. So um, the DVR functionality doesn't really make a lot of sense for, for what we're doing. Um, and I, you know, there's no way that we could get away with, uh, with DVRing stuff from the web. That's just not, uh, not something that we're interested in doing. Um, so we really think of what Boxy is doing and, and kind of where things are going is kind of the next evolution from DVR. So being able to access any movie you want on, on Netflix, any TV show you want, um, being able to jump between all these different services, that's why we've created this TV show library. So you can aggregate you know, pretty much everything that's available online, whether it's premium and, and subscription or if it's ad supported and free. Uh, we kind of bring that all into one interface so you can access it whenever you want. And hopefully you don't need a DVR anymore. Okay. Um, I want to thank uh, Andrew Kippen for coming with us today. It was awesome. Uh, you you still be able to make it today and uh, answer some of the questions that we had on the, the Boxy software and the Boxy box as well. Thanks, guys. Um, and I'll keep you up to date on the iPad app whenever it comes out next month. And... Uh, would love to come on and, and chat about it again. Oh Please yeah, do. once we get some more updates and new things coming out, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Sure, that'd be great. 
So thank you so much for having me. I've got to run. Thanks, man. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Ciao.